Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Tire of Reeds. Welcome to my May wrap up. Now, I'm gonna probably keep this nice, short, sweet, and simple because because I'm terrible with reviews. <laughs> so, let's just get into it. We're gonna make it quick. I don't wanna waste your time. You don't wanna waste my time. We're just gonna, let's go. First up, I read Persephone Station by Stina, Stina Lick. I gave this book three stars. Overall, this month was pretty average. I gave four three stars and one five star, but that five star, that was pretty good. But Persephone Station by Stina Lick, it was, this story, it's compared as Cowboy Bebop meets The Mandalorian, which I kind of see now that I've watched more Mandalorian, or more Cowboy Bebop, I see it. But it follows this, it's been a while, y'all. Is it bad if I just read the synopsis? Um, it follows, um, I'd say Angel. It talks about Rosie a lot in this synopsis synopsis but I disagree with that and I think it should be catered more to Angel's and her story because it does not touch on that at all and this whole book is about Angel and what she does for Rosie. Rosie is like maybe like 75 pages of this almost 500 page book so I just don't get it you know but this is a good story about these like science fiction book about also I just love this cover so much. I'm all over the place. But the science fiction book about this girl, this team, this like found family team, they go and they get hired to help this species that has been isolated because they're like one of the last, they're the original people on the planet. But towards the end, we get into this battle with the government and then with uh, Angel and her team. There's a lot, there's, it's like all over the place. It's a good sign. If you want like a good old science fiction book, I would say this is a good one. It's a very, um, it's just not, it's just not what I thought it would be. And it's not where I wanted the plot to go. So that's why I knocked down a few stars, but I will link my reading vlog for this down below. So if you haven't watched that, go check this out and you can hear my thoughts a little bit better on that. Next up is The Hanjin Murders by Seshi Yokomizo. Uh, this was a three star book for me. I didn't hate it. It was just the first like half was very slow to me so this book is about this screw it i'm just reading the synopsis because that's going to help you more <laughs> in the winter of 1937 the village of Okam okamura is abuzz with excitement over the forthcoming ichiyang ichiyanagi wedding but amid the gossip there's also a worrying rumor it seems a sinister man mass Sinister masked man has been asking questions around the village. Then on the night of the wedding, the Ichiyang, Ichiyanagi household are woken by a terrible scream, followed by the sound of eerie music. Eerie, eerie music. Death has come to Okamura, leaving no trace but a bloody samurai sword thrust into the pristine snow outside the house. Soon, amateur detective Kasuki Kandachi is on the scene to investigate what will become a legendary murder case. But can this scruffy sleuth solve the seemingly impossible crime? So, we follow this like family around and around this murder, and it takes like a while for the murder to even happen. <laughs> but once it does, it picks up a little bit. Then once we get introduced to Kasuki, that is where I started to enjoy it a lot more. It became a much better like pasted book once we got that next POV into it. And his personality is just like very funny. I think I saw one review that's almost like Sherlock Holmes E, but it's like in that same vein of like funny detective that's very smart. One thing I really loved about this book is how it was written. It was written almost in like, like a true crime thing. Like it was like the narrator was reading files and stuff to put it all together. And like they would cut and be like, remember this later and you're like oh remember this later what, what's coming in or like we talked about this earlier and you're like we talked about it earlier oh no but i would recommend this it was a locked room mi murder mystery which i didn't 
know it's such a large subgenre, but they talked a lot about some of the locked room murders that some of the family members read in this. I want to read some. <laughs> I didn't have my coffee yet. But I want to read some of the mur the books that they talked about in this to see to piece together. Maybe I enjoy a locked room murder mystery because it was interesting to see how they put this almost. Um, what was that? Is it a gold? Whatever the thing is where they put like a bunch of things together just to like let it go, you know? But <laughs> that makes sense. But I enjoyed this and I'd love to see the how it played out into a locked room murder mystery. I would recommend this highly. Next up mm, is probably my favorite book of 2021 so far. Five months in. I'm declaring it, best book that I've read so far, and that is Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. This is a science fiction dystopian. As you can see, I don't tab books, but I made a few tabs. So I know I'm not gonna do this book justice, so please look for some more for other reviewers reviewing this book, because I know I'm not gonna do it justice. But if you like dystopian, world falling apart, and you see like characters journey through it, and them traveling through that barren landscape, or that dystopian landscape, this is it. We follow uh, this girl named Lauren. We start out at 15 years old. I will say the first like, maybe 100 pages was a little slow, but looking back on it, I can see the build, the groundwork it was doing for the later part of the story. So we follow this girl that lives in a walled in community to protect them because um, climate change has really struck the world and water is short, like, soup, like they rely on rainwater essentially, and the world's just falling apart. There's all this shit that goes down. <laughs> and then it causes her to leave her community and we follow them, follow them into their journey through the dystopian wasteland. And Lauren is writing this like, because her father's a pastor, she's like doubting her religion, her belief in the religion. So she's starting her new, almost a new religion where it's based in change and how change is essentially everything. And that's what some of these tabs are for. That some of these, some of the ones that Octavia E. Butler came up with, I was just like, wow, she really did that. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. Another one that was like, oh, a tree cannot grow in its parent's shadow. I immediately picked up the second book in this, Parable of the Talents. And so at the end, we, I mean, if you don't want a spoiler for how it ends, skip ahead a little bit. When I put this book down, you can get out. But in the end, finds a man, Ben Coley, who has a piece of land up north in like Oregon. And they all, go there and they're starting a community so I'm very interested to see where in the second book how we I'm assuming we follow Lauren and her earth seed community community too and their upbringing into this new community wow how many times am I gonna say community in <laughs> this new society and so I highly 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 recommend this I don't believe I did this I, I know I did I didn't give this book justice but I'm, if you like that wasteland wanderer going through the dystopian world, then this is it. And it's told in journal format. And like she summarizes everything at the end of the day, basically. And I just, I just love it. You know, like newfound author that I love, I guess. It was so well written. It's just like mm, top tier. Please go read it. Next up is This Body's Not Big Enough for the Both of Us by Edgar Quintero. This is what I thought <laughs> was a science fiction book. That's why I picked it up. Turns out it was a mystery book of like a whodunit. So it's about this private in investigator. They go by AZ Kim, Kim, AZ Kimrian, but it's this, the way they describe it is that like, they're like conjoined twins, except own, they're only conjoined in the mind so they're like two people Adrian and Zoe so Adrian I believe controls the right half and Zoe controls the left half of the brain and so they can it's like they almost like take over the whole body and they go in and out but 
Adrian is like the actual detective and who's like good at his job. And we follow, so they get called in to help out with a person that's been undercover for 18 months. It's actually, it was kind of funny. It's the way the beginning was told. Sometimes they'll like interject with like how it really happened or something. Then as we go on, it turned into more of a mystery, which I was not ready for, but I was still interested. And I thought the pacing of the mystery was good and the delivery of the information of who they are. With that said, I knocked it down one star because it wasn't what I was, what I thought it was, which I guess it wasn't my fault, but I really thought it saw it said science fiction somewhere. So I guess it's my fault. But still, so I may have said the plot was like, okay, but it was just like, it was like I've seen it before. And the only thing that was different was these conjoined twins being the, like these dual personalities being private investigators in this. And that was really what was carrying me through it because everything else going on was very boring. It was just like essentially a bust on a cart drug cartel in California, possibly. <laughs> But then I got confused at times because I couldn't tell if it was a future of our current world, a whole different world, if it was set now. So there were points like that that confused me and lost me on it. But I like the cover. Originally, that's what I bought it for. <laughs> but I didn't hate the writing and I didn't hate the writing. So I may look into their other works, but I will say the characters were the best part of it. It's very, the personalities of the characters is what really carried me through it. I almost gave, I gave it a nine for that out of 10 on Compile. So if it wasn't for to care the characters on all, I don't, I think it would be rated a little bit lower as well. But I mean, I'm sure it's right for someone. So if you'd like a mystery, it's short. It was very fast read. It's barely 200, okay, well, that's a lot. <laughs> it's like 250 pages, but it was, it went by really fast. So if you're looking for a quick thriller, just, or not even thriller, a quick mystery, with a little bit of science fiction into it, I would recommend this. It was, it's a very neat niche. Niche? Neat niche? Is that English? A neat niche for you to be in, but I can see it could work. Last up is A Hero Born by Jin Yong. Um, this is a, book, a fantasy book that's translated by Anna Holmwood. It is highly praised in China and it's it's like one of those, like in the foreword by the translator, she says like how like when she was studying Chinese, everyone that she would ask who lived in China, their favorite fantasy book was this series. So, and it was like impossible to translate, so she took it on and she did it. This book is such a, like a, like I loved the aesthetics. Obviously, I bought it because of that, and you hear this is like the fifth time I said it. But if you put this lines together, they make a dragon, and it's so fun. But it just fell a little flat. Um, I recorded a vlog for it. I don't think it's the best, but if you want to watch it, let me know down below, and I can I certainly put it up. But it felt like one big prologue almost. But with that said, it reminded me a lot of Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb in the way of like, you see this character grow because you start with literally our main character Guanjing in the womb <laughs> until we get to him being 18. So it's essentially um, this story of where this Taoist priest and a group of men and women called the Seven Freaks of the South come together and make a bet where after their parent, their fathers were murdered by the Jin Empire, they, the mothers like were ran away from the fight while they were pregnant. So the Taoist priest and I think it was like, his name is Chu Chi Chang, which I also feel like I just butchered that. Chu Chi Chang and the Seven Freaks of the South make a bet where each of the respective parties will go and find one of the two children because the Tao Chu Chi Chang promised them that he would train them once they're of age or born and a little bit older. And so we, they get into a moment where they have a discussion of who's more powerful and who's better. And so they make a bet that in 18 years, they'll come back to the spot and the two children will fight to see who's 
the better um, Shifu, Shifus. So we follow Yu Guajing and his whole journey being with the Geng with Genghis Khan, and that that journey through. Then we get to the end of it where like we get some reveals, which. I believe I talked about in the vlog, so if you want to watch it, let me know again down below. One thing I will say is that I didn't feel like it was very fantastical. There were definitely fantastical elements in it, but it almost felt to me as like a historical fiction book. But I know that's completely wrong because towards the end, I was starting to see those fantastical elements. I think the only thing that was throwing me for a loop, and this was a personal thing, was that it wasn't a um, Europe, European mid medieval set book in fantasy and so that was my own personal like mental thing I had to get over but now that I'm finished with this first book it ended on such a cliffhanger that A is rude and B made me want to pick up the second one even more but I don't think it's gonna, I'm gonna rush to do it I I do want to pick it up and read it it had a certain cliffhanger that I was like oh and I'm intrigued to see where the story goes from there and to complete the dragon <laughs> on my bookshelf. But other than that, I would highly recommend it. It was a good first book, and I wanna see where the other ones go to like really promote it to other people, but I would still certainly promote it now. Also, I give this three stars if I didn't say. <laughs> I don't know if I said that to anyone. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I know this was a very terrible wrap up, Hopefully it gets better as we go on. Let me know what you read down below. Um, was it a good reading month for you? It was an okay reading month for me. I didn't certainly hate anything I read, but it was just like meh, a blase month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night or whatever. I hope you're having fun celebrating whatever you're celebrating. And please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at tired underscore reads. Thank you so much. Bye.